Hey guys, in this video um, I want to show you how I quit my office job and started a farm from scratch. So in about 2016-2017, uh, well really it's probably the beginning of about 2015, I started to become interested in homesteading, regenerative farming, started doing a lot of research, reading books, uh, watching YouTube videos and by about 2018 I was ready to have a go at some of it. And it was mainly just a trial and test and collect data. Um, so it was all very much homestead scale. And I wasn't investing very much time. Now I was still working uh, full time. So I was only doing this um, in my spare time. And I was also single. Uh, so I had time to allocate to it. So this was my first uh, layer operation. Um, and I actually... I invested very little in this. Um, this was on my dad's farm, um, so it's a little square. I think it's like uh, 10 meters by 10 meters, something like that there. And you would think it was ostriches I was going to keep. I put two rows of sheep wire. That's like two foot eight sheep wire, so that's like four, or five foot six, oh, um, five foot six and high. And then I had another row of barbed wire on that. And then I had chicken wire, three foot chicken wire all the way around. And then I had electric fence all the way around. Uh, the fox definitely wasn't getting these chickens. And then the chicken coop, I completely made this. Um, I didn't spend a penny on it. These are all, that's uh, actually recycled pallets. And my dad had these uh, four big pieces of wood and the tin just lying around his farm. So I took them and I just got some old pallets and this was the nest boxes here. The chickens went in there and then I had a big door on the other side I could go in. And that was in 2018. This is four years on. It's actually still standing there. Um, we use this for a different application now. Those was my layers. Then I made this little greenhouse. And again, um, I made that with uh, things... The, the wood structure here, that they were old sheep slats my, my dad had that he took the, the slats off and they were just lying around the back of a shed. So I took them, I had a piece, I bought a piece of plastic for this, I think it cost like 30 euros and I was in the greenhouse business. Um, then I started putting in a couple of veg beds. Again, this is just right beside my chicken run. Um, I took a little square off my dad's farm and put in some beds. <coughs> And eventually you can see here where I was working, putting a fence around it, so I fenced it off. Put in three garden beds there to kind of start getting my fingers in the growing scene. And then behind this as well, you can see this is where I put um, our bees. So my first bees, they were actually the first animals I ever came to the farm. Um, my first hive of bees, so I fenced off a little area so that my dad had sheep running through here so they weren't over scratching on the box and getting knocking it over. Then another part of my dad's farm, I put in this little uh, silvio pasture, just one strip. There's five fruit trees in here, and then I've interplanted berry bushes um, along with them, and then we mulched it out. And this was just a test. I knew nothing about trees, um, so I was just trying, having a go at it. That was it. You know, I put there's maybe 100 euros of fruit trees there and some berry bushes, and then I put up the one break along with it. So it was just about having a go, and then... We actually had to come along, or my dad had to come along and put in this uh, electric fence to keep the sheep out as well. Uh, I wanted to have a go at meat chickens. So this is actually in, uh, I was renting a house with a garage at the time. And we just put down some lino, made up a box in the garage, and that became our brooder. And then I made, this is a John Skovich style chicken tractor. The reason why I made this here is because I could stand inside it easily and collect data from the birds. I could weigh the birds and do all that there and collect data. And the, one of the last ones was I got in three pigs. Uh, there were some woods in Dad's farm, so I got in three pigs so that I could uh, start to figure all that out. And the end of the summer... I was able to kind of put together an Excel sheets for the enterprises and that was one of my main goals was to be able to kind of start to collect quantifiable data of how much grain do I feed them, what weight will an animal get to, um, this sort of data because there was data out there but I didn't know if that there was um, specific to my context. So it helped me source material, you know, I had to go and find where can I get grains, where can I get birds, where can I get pigs and all this stuff. So I started to make contacts and I was starting to get quantifiable data that I could start to use for planning. The enterprises that were looking good to me were layers, broilers, pigs and turkeys. Um, 
very soon on, I realized that market gardening was um, a lot of man hours uh, for what I was going to be able to manage. And the weather played a big part in it too. I'm very coastal. Um, so I started to sway away from that. But at this point, I had no land. Um, I was just kind of, my dad was giving me, uh, let me use some of his farm. And he doesn't have a big farm either. Um, and to this point, I had invested about 1,500 euros um, just in basic stuff, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there. But it was all very homesteady, and I was still working off the farm. And in October of 2018, um, it was kind of the end of the summer, and I started, I collected most of my data. And I attended a 10-day regenerative farm training with Richard Perkins um, in Ireland here. And at that point, I was kind of like, okay, I... I'm at the point now where I can either need to commit to this and have a go at it or I need to just, you know, call it homesteading and carry on with that and not maybe spend so much money on it or at least know it's a hobby at that point. So along came 2019 or well, coming into 2019, I realized it's time to scale this thing up. Um, I had figured out how to care for the animals. I had figured out how to make all the finances and the spreadsheets work. I just didn't know if anybody was going to buy this stuff from me. And so for me, 2019 was going to be the year to try and establish if there's going to be a market. So I was willing to put in 10,000 euros um, and try and set up the brand and establish to see if there's a market out there. And then my, my main goal for this year was just to break even. That's all I wanted to do. Now, originally, I was going to... Uh, finish my off-farm job and kind of give this a good year but um, just the way things went with the job I was working the projects I was working on was running over and I ended up working off the farm right up until about August of 2019 um, before I got finished up uh, that wasn't my plan but that's how it panned out now I'll show you later on how I was able to do that um, but my main goal for 2019 was just to try and figure out if people would buy this from me and then I would try and take it from there. Um, and like I was saying, I was working full time off the farm as well, so it was a lot of full on work here. Um, I still had no land to farm on and that was, I, I wasn't, I was kind of still not convinced. I wasn't sure if, if there was a proper business model here because I didn't know if people would buy it. So I wasn't going to, I was going to try and do this as low key as possible. So I managed to convince my dad that I would use some of his farm, uh, more of his farm for one season. And then if I could make it work, then I would, I would go on and try and find a farm to rent. I'm a firm believer in uh, kind of build it and they will come, you know. And I kind of thought, you know, if I can pull all this together, show that it all works, I'll find a farm somewhere, a farm will come to me. And that did eventually happen. And one of the other big advantages I had on my side right here was this was kind of the end of 2018 going into 2019. And it was uh, pre-COVID and material was still pretty cheap because we were, we were coming out of a recession in Ireland. You know, 2014, 15, 16, um, the housing market was still stagnant. And we were just starting to get back on our feet. So the price of materials was incredibly cheap compared to how they are today. Um, you know, I think if I looked back, you know, the price of wood and steel was probably, ha was probably half then. So it was a great time for me to be starting my farm and, and trying to invest in infrastructure because I was effectively getting twice the amount of infrastructure for my money then as what I would get today. Um, a very good uh, mentor of mine once said to me, you know, a recession, he was a great entrepreneur, a recession is the best time to start any business. And in fact, he said you should start multiple businesses in a recession because you're basically heads, heads in your bets on inflation, which is almost guaranteed. Um, maybe what I want to show you is here before we move on is we want to jump on Google Earth. And uh, this is my dad's farm here. And it's actually a... Uh, a valley floor this is a river um, going through the floor of the valley and then this is the floor is quite the floor is really here is is quite level but then this rise is right up here heading uphill and the same on the side and you can actually see the terrain actually moves into uphill land here and this is actually quite steep now this is only small I think this rectangle here is like maybe six acres um, and actually you can see here this little square here that's our original chicken run and there's our garden beds there, and our bees were right there. Um, I used to run the pigs in these woods, uh, the first pigs I trialed. 
and actually more recently we ran the pigs in this hill ground here pretty successfully and this is where I grew up in this house here my grandparents lived in this house and uh, I have an uncle that lived with my grandmother he never got married he's a mechanic and this is his workshop and that's where I built a lot of my infrastructure as well this is my dad's shed here um, in Ireland we house a lot of sheep and cattle are housed over the winter not sheep not so much depending on, on where you are but my dad houses a sheep in what we call like a slatted house so it's a big tank concrete tank that catches all the manure and slats on top and the animals are on top of that um, but I basically uh, my dad let me use this uh, field up here to use I think it's like four acres maybe and that's what I was going to use to get kind of kickstart my season now one of the reasons why I was able to work off the farm um, is because and still managed to pull it all together there's where I worked okay that's the bakery there it's like half a mile and so I was able to you know I, I could go to the farm at lunchtime uh, I, you know I, I could go and come from the farm if I needed to um, and my dad was also around the farm so I was able to get things up and running um, due to the, for I think the reason why I was able to do that was the proximity that I was my original goal was not was to be working on the farm full-time and getting this thing dialed in but uh, it ended up I was working in the bakery and I made it work I wouldn't like to be working, you know, 10, 20 minutes away. Um, all this. The other thing was around this time, kind of the end of, well, it was around the, I think maybe September, October uh, in 2018 when the kind of name for the farm came to me. I was waiting for a while to try and for it to come to me. Um, and eventually I settled on Heather Hill Farm around then. So I had a brand as well now that I was going to build on. And it was time to start spending some of this money that I was going to spend. So the first thing we done was we went to build an eggmobile. And I'm pretty handy with my hands. So I was able to uh, build a lot of this with some donor parts, some other things. And all in all, um, if memory serves me well, I think I spent 1,800 euros building this eggmobile. And now you could put in a pasture poultry system, you could put about 350 birds. It is mirrored exactly on the Ridgedale model, I figured. Uh, I've seen that working for quite a few people and I thought I don't know enough about this that seems like a safe bet to start with and then I can down the road I can change things to suit me and I'm able to look at pictures and videos and see it and pretty much um, reverse engineer it myself uh, and yeah I put up a lot of work into this and you know I done this in the winter of 2018 um, going into 2019 and Got it all looking snazzy. It was a proper nice job. Now I was very proud of it. I'd put a lot of work into it. Then came the day to put the birds in it, and you can see me there, just freaking delighted with life. Um, it was a lot of work went in. You know, it was a couple of years went into planning to getting that there. And myself and my dad went up and picked up those those two hundred layers there we put into that the first year. We went up. We met the truck on the side of the road, and we took them home, put them in, and I was just, you know, I couldn't believe that I had got to this point, um, all the work I had planning, you know, everybody thought I was crazy. You know, the, you got to remember, this is like almost four years ago. There was next to nobody in Ireland farming like this or doing this type of farming. Uh, there's no young people getting into farming. Everybody thought I was crazy. You know, they just thought I was, I was off my head. I probably was, but um, I had a plan and I thought it would work so I was going for it and the good thing about starting to get these layers in was after a while they started laying eggs because up to this point here it was all money out spend 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 and I only had 10,000 euros it doesn't take long to spend that 10,000 euros let me tell you so having some money starting to come in that was a real big turning day as well uh, for the farm and I soon uh, started to get um, a holistic plant grazing system going so I got this first season I got six lambs from my dad and I started a holistic plant grazing them uh, in front of the chickens and I was really doing a lot of learning I was collecting a lot of data you now a lot of like time and motion data how long does it take me to move an egg mobile how long does it take me to move the sheep because I knew next year if I was going to commit to go for this proper um, I needed to have this data uh, to make the best informed decision I could. Um, the old 
chicken run that got repurposed as an apiary and I was scaling up um, my bees and again we started to get some honey and got some sales and again the goal was to break even. Um, I really love this picture when I look back at it. Uh, I mean I didn't have any land, I had very little money but I had a, a goal or a dream and this was actually making it happen. We've got chickens grazing here after some herbivores grazing here. I've got my broilers working up there. We've actually got, this is our little greenhouse that we're producing starts in for growing veg. There's our silvio pasture, our uh, fruit trees and our berry bushes. And this is like, this is all happening within about an acre. And I kind of realized then at that point that, you know, um, it's not about size, you know, it's about efficient um, stacking of enterprises and they all complement each other. And it was a big kind of aha moment for me like this whole you know this all works so well um, and that was our first year there that was my first fridge full of chickens uh, I can still remember that day I was just so delighted uh, to have produced all that meat myself um, and I'd brand and I feel is a very strong part of any business and so I had started from the get-go um, really putting my brand out there I got my van all done uh, got my clothes with my brand on it and I invested some of my money in that because I felt it was very important to get the name out there and start telling people the story so they could associate the story with the name. Holy Go was something else we had to build um, and again I was just utilizing a lot of skills I had and back here I was uh, using a lot of wood because wood was a lot cheaper than steel and I was more confident in wood. Um, since then, um, recently I've started to push myself more to use steel because in the long term it's more economical and I just push myself to be a better steel worker. Um, but again, I had very limited money, remember. I had only 10,000 euros and I needed, I wanted to get turkeys up and running, I wanted to get layers up and running. I had, uh, I was grazing sheep and I had pigs in the system as well. So I had spread that 10,000 euros out to get infrastructure. Uh, for all those things up and running, uh, which I'd done, uh, it was a stretch. And remember, I was working off the farm here, you know, uh, office hours, and then I'd have to tend all the animals, and then in the afternoons and evenings, um, and the weekends, I was going out building all this stuff, and it was mostly on my own, um, because I didn't have the money to pay anybody. Uh, my dad, my uncle would help me out, uh, or I would rope someone else in if I needed help, but um, the majority of the work was on my own. And that really kind of concluded 2019. It was a, it was kind of the test to see if the market was there. Very soon, actually, into that season, I realised there is a massive market there, and I couldn't actually keep up with demand at all. I was able to collect a lot of data then as well, um, because it was data at a scale that I was never at before, and so I knew I could I could do a lot of planning in that winter. That was pretty accurate planning that I, I could plan things out you know time in motion finances I was getting a good um, grasp on these things so I could put together a realistic plan for the next year um, one of the big things was um, I still had no farm but towards the middle of the season um, I have two sisters and they had actually bought two properties which were adjoining each other um, or oh, well they bought two houses which were adjoining they were all in one piece of land it was a 10 acre site and they had no use for the land and I was like hey I'm looking to rent a farm and they're like sure we'd love you to rent it and so that's when I got the farm and I knew now moving on to this new farm there was very little infrastructure on it I was going to have to buck up and spend some money um, and invest in this business if I want to grow it and be serious about making a proper business that can sustain at least to employ me and that's what I done and in the next video we'll, we'll take a look at that whole process of moving on to the new farm and where we started investing money in first and how we started to set things up so we'll take a, we'll take a look at that in the next video and thanks for watching everyone